Hey friends, welcome to my channel. And in this video, I am going to discuss about a very important problem which came in CSIR NET exam 2018 June. Okay, so uh, when I uploaded the answer key of the organic part, uh, for this particular question, uh, which was given like this, so 9, 10 dimethyl decalin, so th four options were there. And uh, I told that uh, their stability will be same. But uh, in many of the uh, answer key of different tuition centers, they told that the trans isomer will be more stable than the cis. And uh, maybe for this reason, some of you may give dislike to my uh, video. But in this video, I am going to uh, explain this thing logically, why their stability should be same. Actually, this, uh, this example, 910 uh, dimethyl decalin, it is not given in any book, any uh, known book or I uh, searched in internet also, I didn't find any reference for that. So, in the book of D. Nashipuri, I got two examples, the normal cis and trans decalin and 9 methyl or you can say, uh, actually it should be 9 methyl, okay. So, uh, 9 methyl decalin. And uh, normal uh, unsubstituted uh, decalin case I got. But let me now, uh, and on the basis of that two examples, I will explain why uh, their stability should be same. So watch this, watch this video till the end. So norm for normal uh, cis and trans decalin, as you can see these these two. So in this cases, uh, basically uh, whenever we um, compare the stability of cy uh, cyclohexane systems, we have to check either the 1,3 diaxial interaction or the gauge butyl interaction. Both are basically same, the different names uh, for the uh, event, but it is basically same. So, I will uh, uh, explain this thing on the basis of gauge butyl interaction. So, what is mean by gauge butyl interaction? So, uh, simply it is mean by, let's say, you have a uh, Newman projection formula of some molecule like this, and these are your group. So let's say here you have one methyl group or here you have one methyl group. So these two are gauche, okay? So they are, uh, they, when they are gauche and they are adjacent to one another, this is called gauche butyl interaction and other groups may be there. So this is called basically the gauche butyl interaction. Two groups, when they are gauche, uh, they have gauche relationship, this is called the gauche butyl interaction. Now, if we count this gauche butyl interaction, for this uh, unsubstituted normal cis and trans uh, decalin, we can find that for trans, uh, trans decalin there is no gauge butyl interaction. There is no gauge butyl interaction. But for cis uh, decalin, there are three gauge butyl interactions, namely 1, 9, 8, 7. So this is 1, 9, 8, 7. This one, this one, and 1, 9, 10, 5. So 1, 9, 10, 5 and uh, 3915 so it is 3915 so basically when gauge butyl interaction arises when in your cyclo exchange chair form there is a axial group then only the gauge butyl interaction comes so in this case you can see for this particular cyclo exchange ring this group is axial and for this particular cyclo exchange ring there is uh, one group axial so this uh, due to the presence of these two axial configuration axial groups this three gauge butyl interaction comes and in this case all the groups are equal to real so there is no such gauge butyl interaction so basically due to the presence of this three gauge butyl interaction so for one gauge butyl interaction it is generally taken as uh, 3.35 as the energy uh, comes from the gauge butyl, gauge butyl interaction so if you multiply it with 3 it will be 10.05 uh, kilojoule per mole so this is why your transbutane is 10.05 kilojoule more stable than your uh, cis uh, decalin. Now let us come to the case where you have one substituent. Let's see it is at the 10 position. So actually it should be 9 because when you do the nomenclature. But in this case uh, it doesn't matter. We have to just look at the stability. So let's say one methyl substituent is there. Now what happens when you put one methyl substituent here, it uh, encounter four uh, gauge butyl interaction for your trans case. You can see this is 3, 4, 10, 11. So this is 3, 4, 10, 11 because this methyl group is axial to both of the cycloexchange ring. So for each of the cycloexchange, two gauge uh, interaction is there. One is 3, 4, 10, 11, then 6, 5, 10, 11, then 1, 9, 10, 11, and then 7, 8, uh, 7, sorry, 8, 9, 10, 11. So this four gauge interaction is there. Whereas uh, if you put this methyl group in any of the position, uh, any of the 9 or 10 position in this uh, cis isomer, 
then you will have to encounter only two ghost group interaction because in this case the methyl group will be axial to only one cyclohexane ring and not two so so in this case you will have uh, 8 9 10 11 so this is basically 8 9 10 11 this is 11 this methyl group is 11 so 8 9 10 11 and another one is 6 5 10 11 so this is 6 5 10 11 because you can see this methyl group is axial axial only to this cyclohexane uh, with respect to this cyclohexane ring this methyl is equatorial so there is no uh, extra ghost butyl interaction for this methyl group uh, on this cyclohexane only ghost butyl interaction will encounter for this cyclohexane now overall result will be uh, for this particular uh, cis isomer there will have 3 plus 2 so total of 5 ghost butyl interactions but for uh, this trans isomer there will have only four ghost butyl interaction so overall uh, this cis for this cis isomer there will have only one extra ghost butyl interaction and that's why uh, for a 9 or 10 substituted case uh, the trans isomer is only 3.35 kilojoule more stable than cis isomer so we can see if we put one substitute and how the stability difference changes now uh, more interesting case happens when you have uh, two methyl substituents in 9 and 10 position. So in this case you can see two methyl substituents are there at 9 and 10 position and in this case if you count the ghost butyl interaction you can see now if you put extra uh, one methyl on the trans isomer it again will encounter another four ghost butyl interaction namely uh, this 2, 1, 9, 12. So this is 2, 1, 9, 12 then uh, 7, 8, 9, 12 then uh, your 4, 10, uh, 9, 12 and your 5, 10, 9, 12. Okay. So these all ghost butyl interactions will be there. So overall 8 ghost butyl interactions will be there in this trans isomer. But for the cis isomer you can see uh, after the introduction of this extra methyl group there will be uh, again 2 uh, ghost butyl interaction for this particular cyclohexane ring because now this methyl group is axial to this cyclohexane ring but equatorial to this cyclohexane ring. So that means it will have extra ghost butyl interaction 2, 1, 9, 12 and 4, 10, 9, 12 but at the same time these two methyl groups are also now at ghost position so there is another ghost butyl interaction between these two methyl groups so overall three ghost butyl interaction now if we uh, calculate the total number of ghost butyl interaction you can see for the trans isomer also it is 8 for the cis isomer also it is 8 so overall uh, 8 ghost butyl interaction exists for both of the molecules so that means uh, the overall effect neutralizes the uh, effect of ghost butyl, ghost butyl interaction and that's why this uh, uh, two molecules cis and trans isomer they will have should have they should have same stability now this example is not given in any book so for uh, the confirmation of the answer we have to wait for the csi answer key but if you follow the logic and i explained the thing uh, fully logically so if you uh, can get the logic you will understand that uh, their stability should be same if you have uh, any further reference or if you have any further suggestion you can let me know in the comment section i will definitely uh, reply you and if you have any reference you can send me to my email address so thank you for watching and if you are new in this channel then, then don't forget to subscribe my channel and uh, best of luck